Hey everyone, it's Michael Goosebumps fan. I hope you're doing well today. I'm gonna start it. I finally decided I'm gonna go ahead and start it over the last week or so. I've started and finished, as of just a few minutes ago, the first book of this trilogy of reviews and trilogy of books I'm gonna read and talk about for you guys. Uh, these guys have become so popular that they are now in the Goosebumps movie from 2015, which was a surprise throwback to people like myself who never knew about these characters growing up. Kind of shows how much that movie really appreciates a lot of smaller characters rather than just nothing but the big ones, like Slappy, like Haunted Mask. But anyway, uh, I'm going to finally start the Body Squeezers books. Yes, the first two are in the Series 2000 books. Um, let's see, we have number four, which is the one I'm going to review, which is, uh, what is it? Invasion of the Body Squeezers Part 1. About 120 pages long. That's the one we're about to review. And then we got uh, Invasion of the Body Squeezers Part 2. If you want to see something really cool, also this is number 5. Uh, if you take this cover and you take this cover and put them just like that, they actually correlate. I don't know if you guys... Am I doing it right? Let me see if I can see fairly well. Yeah, there we go. This guy over here is holding this kid's leg on Part 2's book. It's pretty cool. Anyway, I can't see fairly well. It might have not been lined up. I tried. Anyway, um... So part two, I'll try to get a review out for sometime soon. But then a couple, I guess not too long after these books came out, the Give Yourself Goosebumps brand had a special edition called number six, Revenge of the Body Squeezers. Squeezers. Can't talk. It's very late. It's like 3.30. Um, I figured I'd go ahead and get this review out now that I finished the book. So we have those three books. I plan on getting them reviewed. I don't know how soon I can throughout December, but over the next week or weeks whatever i will try to get these things reviewed pretty much fairly back to back not back to back as in every other day like i've been trying to do again but uh i will try my best to get these reviewed for you it's just kind of a christmas present for me to you a lot of people have wanted me to talk about these because not many reviews are really out there for the body squeezers books as popular as they were to be in the movie from 2015. you don't really see anybody talk about these um, but anyway i don't know how beloved these are the Body Squeezers trilogy, I guess, if you want to call it that. I don't really know how much love is out there in the community for these guys. But uh, I'll tell you this. Reading part one right now for the first time ever, this is kind of a kind of a miss. But mainly because it was designed as an experiment for Goosebumps to have a part one and a part two. If you put the two books together, it's about a 250-page story. Uh, as a standalone, it kind of sucks. <laughs> it's kind of kind of plotless. It really doesn't go very many places in this first half of this tale. Uh, not the first half of this book. This is the first half of a tale that is concluded with two books. Uh, this one really doesn't have a whole lot going for it, frankly. It has some good moments. It has some good tension, some frights. I like our main character, Jack. But aside from that, there's really just, it, there's really just not a lot happening, if I'm being honest with you. Uh, it feels more like fluff than anything. If you had a Goosebumps book that had not been chopped down to be 120, 150 pages or whatever, this is what it feels like. It, it just feels like it's a bloated book and a bloated uh, duology, if you will. Anyway, what is Invasion of the Body Squeezers Part 1 about? Uh, just so you know, when I get to Part 2, when I review that in the next video, I will probably spoil a little bit of the ending of this book here, but there's really not a whole lot to spoil. So just so you know, you don't have to read the books to go and watch each of my reviews. I will do every... I will... I can't talk. I will do everything I can to not spoil them for you guys, so you have some enjoyment if you want to read them at some point. Now, I don't think these two books were very hard to get your hands on. Now, The Revenge of the Body Squeezers was really hard to get my hands on, but when I did, I was really thankful for it. But these first two, I don't think they were that difficult to get my hands on. Anyway... Uh, so, part one of Invasion of the Body Squeezers. What is this book about? Well, we have a fellow named Jack, who is nicknamed by all the kids at school, which this, is a, this has a lot of side character kids that I really don't care anything about. They all kind of suck, they're all kind of mean, they're all kind of generic, in a worse than Goosebumps way. Uh, they call him Saucer Man, because he claimed that he, he saw aliens one time. <clears throat> yeah. There's some very concerning uh, news reports happening recently about some weird meteorites or something, some kind of unidentified object, not a UFO per se, they don't really know if it's flying or if it's a flying object, but they think it's just an unidentified object in the sky flying around or floating around or something. It's more than likely a meteorite that could 
uh, collide with the Earth or the Moon or something like that. And scientists aren't really sure. NASA's not really sure. It's kind of an interesting setup. It reminds me of like a like a Super 8 or like an E.T. or like a like an Iron Giant type of story. That Spielbergian kind of feel. And I guess with this being a part one and part two tale, even though it's in the Goosebumps universe, I kind of expected a bigger scale story. I kind of expected this book to end on a bigger scale, like in space or something. It doesn't really do anything like that. It's still kind of just on Earth by the end of the story. Just this first half of the story, but still nonetheless, the end of this book, not to spoil anything, is still kind of concluded and contained within the Earth, which is bizarre. Now Jack, or Saucer Man, whatever you want to call him, has a little girl that's a sister named uh, Billy. And Billy drives me nuts. Have you ever met somebody in your life that uh, is like a co-worker or something that just constantly has to one-up everybody around them? Everything that other people had happen to them, they had double that. Oh, you broke your leg? I broke both of my legs while I was climbing up Mount Everest. You have to have those people. They're annoying. I can't stand them. Billy is that kind of person. I can't stand this kid. I don't care if she's a kid in the story. She, I just, I genuinely don't like this character at all. As much as I like Jack, I don't like her. Uh, now, Jack also happens to have a, a very bizarre, weird neighbor named Mr. Fleshman. Now, Mr. Fleshman has a very oddball name, by the way. But uh, he is a strange older guy that no one really knows anything about. He's just kind of locked up in his house until one day when Jack sees something weird about a creature that's fighting Mr. Fleshman inside of his house through one of the windows. And uh, he kind of wonders if there's a correlation between that and this asteroid meteorite thing that's going on in space outside of the Earth's atmosphere. He kind of wonders what could be happening with all that, if there is a correlation, and there probably is, but uh, if you read it, I guess you'll find out. Now, with all that being said, do I seem kind of disappointed? It's because I am. Do I kind of seem underwhelmed? It's because I am. <laughs> this book is really not what I thought it was going to be. Not that I really had high expectations. I didn't go into the book reading the back of the book. I never do that, really. Uh, I just kind of went into it expecting like an alien invasion story. And for this first half of this tale, you really don't get that. It's finely written. It, it's a series 2000 book, so it also has a little bit of a darker tone to it, which I enjoy that. There's a little bit of a kind of a, a tense-filled moment with a house break-in that was pretty cool. I liked that as well. And the story kind of rides this line of being a little goofy a couple of times in there. Kind of that Goosebumps R.L. Stein kind of silly sometimes. Not always, but just sometimes towards like the third act, if there is a third act of the story. It's kind of somewhere in there that it gets like that. But most of the time, it's just kind of really just Jack uh, crying wolf, if you will. But it's not really crying wolf because it's actually something could be really, really wrong here in his town or in his neighborhood or whatever. People never believe him. His parents don't believe him, which is Goosebumps fashion. You know, you couldn't have a story without people ignoring a kid who's trying to tell you, hey, you could die right now. There's something really bad happening in our neighborhood. They're going to ignore you, kid. Uh, that's going to happen. That's fine. But <laughs> everything else about the book is decent. It's above average, even. It's just by the end of this part one, I, I kind of realized there's not really enough fume to keep this book going because I expected it to go somewhere else by the end of this first book. Nothing really happened in this first one. It was a lot of faking out, you know? I'm hoping part two is not like that. I'm hoping part two really picks up because of what happened at the end of part one, which I won't spoil for you, but I'm hoping part two really picks up and is a better book and could possibly even improve this one. Uh, kind of how I look at the two newest Avengers movies, how you had, like, uh, Infinity War, to me, is improved by Endgame. I think Endgame is a way better film with way more surprises that made Infinity War as good as that was a billion times better. And when I watch them back to back now, that whole like four hours, five hours, whatever it is, it feels so much better as a movie. At least Infinity War does, you know? As a standalone, it's good. It's improved by the second half. I'm hoping that's what happens with part one and part two here. But uh, I'm not going to count my chickens before they hatch, if I'm being honest with you. There's really nothing super special about this book. I was expecting something kind of different. Because this felt like experimental. You know, we're doing a part one, part two. We never did that with Goosebumps. You had, like, Not a Living Dummy part one or part two or just Dummy two, Dummy three, whatever. You had that. Not really in parts. You had Haunted Mask one. Then you had Haunted Mask two. We've had things like that. We've had sequels like Monster Blood and Deep Trouble. We've had things like that that could be either completely unrelated to the first book or they could be completely standalone. We could have so many things 
so many different things that we've done with this whole franchise up to this point in series 2000. It was kind of a cool idea to see what was going to happen instead. What kind of new thing we could do with Goosebumps. Just an experimental idea. What would happen if we took a full-fledged, like, kid's novel, 250 to 300 pages, and split it up amongst two books, part or number four and number five in the Series 2000 list? It's kind of a cool idea. I don't hate that. It's kind of like when they experimented with uh, Triple Header Part 1, or Book 1 and Book 2 of Triple Header. Kind of a cool idea as a concept. I like it. Overall, I haven't, I haven't read Triple Header, but with this, it's kind of like, this is kind of a failed experiment. The first book is going to be the one that people probably look at. I'm just saying, before I read Part 2, they're probably going to look at Part 1 forever now and say that it's so weak, it's really not worthwhile even reading that one. You could probably, and I'm just saying this, you could probably, assuming right now, jump into Part 2 and have no reason to read Part 1 at all. I mean that. As weird as that sounds, it's probably true. They're supposed to be immediately one after the other, immediately tied together as a duology. Not just a sequel, but a straight-up duology. And yet, I would argue you could probably jump into Part 2 and have no issue at all. I really mean that, which is weird. With all that being said, yeah, we have some cool covers here from Tim Jacobus for these books. Invasion of the Body Squeezers is, uh, is not a great book. I still don't know why they're called Body Squeezers by the end of this first book. Why? Why? The aliens described in here the very little amount of time that they're even in here, if they are in this at all, they don't look like this. They, they, all, they don't look like that. They're not even described to look like that yet. Maybe part two will have that. I don't know. But I'm going to be honest with you, man. This was a letdown. <laughs> this was a massive letdown. This thing has suckers on its fingers, man. But instead, at the end of the day, I became the sucker. Anyway, when it comes to Invasion of the Body Squeezers Part 1, if I had to rate this book on a 5-star basis, I would give this one probably a 3 out of 5 stars. This is not a big home run. This is not great. This is not even really good. It's just fine. It's something to read. Uh, it's why it took me so long to get around to finishing it, just because of Thanksgiving, which, by the way, I hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving and a good Black Friday. I hope you were safe and didn't get shot over a TV. Uh, <laughs> Merry Christmas, I can say that now. Uh, so, Invasion of the Body Squeezers Part 1. If I had to rate it, I'd give it like a 3 out of 5 stars. It's fine. It's completely fine. There's nothing really to even say about this. Was it entertaining? Yes, but is it a lot of faking out? Absolutely 100%. Why would you do that with this one? It feels like almost nothing at all, aside from like one little thing, is set up for the next book. It's such a bummer. Anyway, I'll see you in the next couple of reviews over time. We'll see how long it takes me to get around to those. But uh, with it being Christmas time, I have a lot of Christmas movies I'm watching right now. A lot I've already watched. So, let's, uh, let's see what happens with Part 2. I really hope Part 2 is better. I really hope it makes Part 1 better. Anyway, 3 out of 5 stars for this one. What did you guys think about the Invasion of the Body Squeezers Part 1 and Part 2 and Revenge, if you read all those? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section down below. Or you can wait till each of those reviews come out and then put your comments on those if you read them. Uh, anyway, in the meantime, thank you for watching, guys. God bless you all. Again, Merry Christmas. I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. I hope you had a good Black Friday and didn't get shot over a TV. And uh, God bless you. Goodbye.